Are you struggling with ADHD and wondering which medication is best for you? There's a lot of debate about slow versus fast release stimulants. Some say slow and steady wins the race, while others swear by the quick boost of the fast release. But what's the truth? Join me as we uncover the surprising differences between these two types of ADHD medications and learn which one could be the key to getting you the best symptom control. When it comes to ADHD medications, slow-acting stimulants are often the first choice by doctors. These medications are also known as extended release or long-acting stimulants, and they're designed to release the medication slowly over a period of hours. Some common examples include Adderall XR, Vyvanse, Ritalin long-acting, Bocalin, and Concerta. I'd say these are the top five that I'm prescribing the most on a week-to-week -week basis. Now, fast-release stimulants are also known as immediate-release or short-acting stimulants, and these are designed to release the medication quickly over a shorter period of time than the long-acting ones. Common examples of these include Adderall and Ritalin, also known as basic amphetamine and methylphenidate. So how do slow-release stimulants differ from the fast-release ones? Well, the main differences between these, whether they're methylphenidate-based products or amphetamine-based products, all have to do with three main factors. How fast, how much, and how long. The first thing to know is that slow-release stimulants take longer to be effective because they're designed to release the medication in the body gradually over time. And this means that it might take up to an hour or more for the medication to start working. And the initial effects might not be as strong as the ones you see with fast-release medications. The second thing to be aware of is how much medication is released at one time. So not only do fast-release stimulants take effect more quickly, but also they release a larger amount of medication at once. And this can lead to a sudden spike in dopamine, which can have various effects clinically. Some people really like the spike and the quick on feeling. However, others tell me that they have side effects from it. So things like feeling jittery, having increased heart rate and worsened anxiety. You also need to know that just as fast release stimulants have a quick on, they also typically have a quick off. So we see sharp rises and then sharp falls in drug concentration levels meaning that they wear off more quickly and more harshly than slow-acting stimulants. And this is why a lot of people on short-acting stimulants struggle with rebound symptoms after the medication wears off, so things like irritability and moodiness. They typically describe crashing harder than when on the long-acting stimulants. Slow-acting stimulants, on the other hand, release a smaller amount of medication at a time than fast-acting stimulants. The medication is released slowly and steadily, which helps maintain a constant drug level in the body throughout the day. And this can be helpful for people who need sustained symptom relief over an extended period of time. So most classically, we think of kids who are in school or adults who have a typical nine to five job. They have predictable schedules where coverage is needed throughout the whole day. Now, the third thing to be aware of is how long these medications work. Slow release stimulants last longer in the body than fast release ones. Depending on the medication, slow release ones last somewhere between eight to 12 hours, whereas fast-release ones last around three to four hours. This is why the fast-release ones need to be taken two to three times per day to maintain symptom relief, whereas the slow-release ones only need to be taken once per day to get similar coverage. Now, there's obviously gonna be exceptions to this because not all people react the same way to medications. Some people's bodies will chew through the medications more quickly than we'd expect. And the biggest thing I need you to know, and something that I even see doctors getting wrong, is that increasing the dose of the long-acting stimulant will not give you longer coverage throughout the day. Okay, do you hear me on that? It will only give you stronger coverage during the hours it's already in your system. If you're looking to get extra hours covered, what you need to do is add on a booster medication. And the way we do this is by adding on the short-acting form of whichever long-acting stimulant you're on to give you an extra three to four hours of symptom coverage. Now, the choice between slow release and fast release stimulants depends on a variety of factors, including the individual's metabolism and symptom presentation, as well as personal preferences and lifestyle factors. Ultimately, the best way to choose the right medication for you is to consult with your doctor. They can help you weigh the pros and cons of the different medications and provide guidance on which medication is best suited for you and your individual needs. Now, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you found this information to be valuable and click that top video if you wanna learn more about what sets the different methylphenidate-based stimulants apart.